Well, we come to another one of the Beatitudes in this uh, series. And uh, this one here is, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart. Wow. What do we say about that? What does the Bible say about the heart? And when we look at what the Bible says about the heart, where does that leave us? Now, in the Old Testament, we have a statement from Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That doesn't paint a very good picture of the heart. Now, I think what we need to do is just stop and think about what is the heart. Some people think that the heart is the feelings, but it isn't. The feelings are attached to this, of course. And um, some people think of people, well, people have a, a mind, their intellect, and that's just the cold, hard facts. And then they have a heart, and that is more like the emotional response. But the heart is really, what he's referring to in the heart here is the engine of your life. It is that which, which uh, uh, motivates you and drives you. And um, when we, we, t we hear these words about the heart, uh, it's a reference to uh, the motivator, what the, the, the very driving force of your life. And that is why you have Jesus saying these things that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's in Luke chapter 6, verse 45. So as Jesus is teaching, he's teaching about the heart. And he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because this is the driving force. This is who you are. This is the essence of your nature. The problem is, is that the human race turned its back on God. And as a result of that, our hearts have been corrupted. I'm sad to tell you that, but it is a reality that is proven over and over. And that is why Jeremiah 17, 9 can say, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. And then says the Lord, the Lord tries the heart. Well, that doesn't leave us in a very good spot, does it? If, the, if it's the pure in heart that are going to be blessed, and if it's the pure in heart that are going to see God, uh, <clears throat> none of us qualify. None of us qualify because of a sinful heart. Now, in the Old Testament, it talks about having a hard heart. And uh, the promise that God gives from the book of Ezekiel is that he will give us a heart of flesh not a stony heart. And that uh, reflects a living heart. But not a living heart in the sense of just, and he's not talking about the pump, obviously, but the pump is a good illustration. The pump dry, uh, is the engine for the rest of the body. Even the brain needs, it needs this pump to be working and sending the the blood to the supply to the brain, or else uh, the brain's not going to be able to do anything. So uh, the heart is sort of like the pump, is sort of the engine of your body, but your spiritual heart is sort of the engine for your soul. And this is what he's defining here, and he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, as Jesus said, which leaves us with some statements from Jesus. He said this, the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. That's what defiles a man. For out of the heart, Jesus said, proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man but not eating with unwashed hands. That doesn't defile a man. 
Pharisees were considered cons, uh, concerned about the outward appearance. The religious rulers were concerned about the outward appearance. God is interested in what's on the inside. And that is expressed in this beatitude here when he says, uh, speaks about the heart. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But it does leave us with a conundrum because we are none of us could say if ourselves that we are pure in heart, that our motives are pure, that the driving force of our life comes from the place of purity, not in ourselves. However, God has done something, and it's pretty amazing. And here's what it says in the book of Acts, chapter 15. At this time, Paul had come to Jerusalem, or Peter had come back to Jerusalem, pardon me, after sharing with Gentiles, non-Jews. Now, even the Jewish believers were struggling with non-Jews becoming believers, and if they were going to become believers, then they had to do, in their mind, and many of them thought they were going to have to do what all the Jews do, and get circumcised and follow the law of Moses. And so here's what it says. Some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So the apostles and elders came together to dispute this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brothers, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe, which they did. So God who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the holy spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them purifying their hearts by faith now that's the term i want you to consider here purifying their hearts by faith blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god but here we discover, as Peter is addressing the, the believers in Jerusalem, he said their hearts were being purified by faith. Now, friends, that is quite the uh, statement here. Because suddenly, even though we're fallen, even though we have a sinful nature, even though Jesus said, or the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaks, and speaks about some of the wickedness that comes out of the heart of man there's hope there's blessed hope but it is found in jesus christ it is found in the gospel that is being presented as peter said as i preached the gospel god purifying purified their hearts by faith and so what does the lord do from ezekiel it tells us from a stony heart he gives us a heart of flesh he gives us a new heart that's what it actually says that God grants us a new heart. He, he gives us a new engine, as it were. And that our hearts are purified by faith. Now, what does it mean by faith? It means when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are willing to receive him as your Savior, God does a work of purification in you. A purification that's not outward, not ceremonial washings, but it is inward. And so there is a purification that God does. Here's what 1 Peter 1.22 says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brothers, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Isn't that something? So the gospel releases us from the bondage of a heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and purifies our hearts as we believe. Puring, purifies our hearts by faith, as it says. So, what does that mean then? It means then that once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, God purifies your heart. Now, some people would say, well, how can that be? Because I know I, I still have this sin full nature in me, and I know, I know I'm tempted to sin, and often I do sin. What a, where's the pure, pure heart in that? Here's the thing. When you become a believer, your heart is purified by faith. The engine of your life is transformed and changed. You do become a new creation, 
but you still have a sinful nature attached to this old body. Until you die, you will have a sinful nature. And the question now becomes, will I allow the sinful nature to rule my heart? Or will I submit to the Spirit of God who has come to live in me, who's purified my heart, and as I submit to him, then good things come out of my heart. Jesus said a good man, Luke 6, 45, or the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man or the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth will speak. So it's possible to be a good man but not good in myself, but good in the Lord. Because of his goodness to me, I can have a pure heart. Because of his goodness to me ongoing, I can live in purity. I can walk in purity. I can think and speak in purity. And so we have these promises given to us. Titus 2.14 says, He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works, good things, not evil things. And so we have these promises that are given to us. We have these promises of the purified heart. Now that ought to cause us to rejoice and give thanks to God that there is hope for us, that we are not bound to live in impurity, but we have the privilege of living in purity by the grace of Almighty God. So, when I become a believer, my heart is purified. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And it doesn't have to remain li uh, practicing sin. Instead, the engine of my life will be the presence of the Holy Spirit within me with his purifying power giving me so that out of my life flows pure things. Rather than filth, goodness, kindness. Rather than gossip, encouragement. Speaking the truth in love. And even as Peter writes about this, he, does, he makes that statement here when he says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, that is, by faith, through the Spirit of God, trusting God, in sincere love of the brothers, love one another fervently with the pure heart, with the purified engine of your life, as it were. But how does that work out practically? Well, first of all, you need Jesus Christ as your, light, your Savior. You need him to come and purify your heart. You need him to give you a new heart, a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. You need to give him, a, him to give you a new engine in your life. But you also need, on a daily basis, once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, to submit to the rule of the Spirit of God in your life, to allow Christ to do the living in you, and as you submit to his rule, to the Spirit's rule, then your heart is governed by the Spirit of the living God. If you do not do that, then you're allowing your heart to be governed by the sinful nature, and wicked things will come out. Yes, wicked things will come out, even if you're a Christian. Now, it sounds like, well, well why would my heart be purified, and then it's, is it is it... Isn't it always pure from then on? It can be my heart. It can be governed by the Spirit of God, which gives the sense of purifying. And that's what it says in the passage um, in the book of Acts. It says purifying their hearts by faith. That yes, it's a past thing of purifying, but there's this ongoing purification that we experience as we walk with God. My friends, God wants you to know what it is to walk with a pure heart. And it sounds almost frightening to say, my heart has been purified by faith because we feel like, oh, I could never say that. I'm not just not that holy. I'm not that good. But it's not about you and what you've done. It's about Christ and what he's done. It's about his presence, his power ruling in your life. It is not meant to be that Christians are constantly living in sin. 
It's not meant to be that we are constantly having a, this, a turmoil where sin is ruling in our lives. We are meant to come to the Lord for cleansing and know it and believe that we've actually been purified by faith in Jesus Christ and to accept that if we sin, we can confess our sin. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, all purified. So there is the initial purification that happens when you are converted and there is ongoing purification as we trust the Spirit of God to work in us. And when we sin and when we fall and when we allow uh, the sinful nature to take the reins in our life, we are not long discovering how wicked we can be. The potential for wickedness is still there in the, un in the believer as well as the unbeliever because of the sinful nature that is there. And the only person who can hold the sinful nature at bay is God himself. We can't. But we are called in to submit to him, to yield to him, to be obedient to him, and to allow him to do the living in us. And as we do, our hearts are being purified. James 4, 8, he's writing to believers, professing believers, says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So my encouragement to you is to come to Jesus Christ now. If you've never been born again of the Spirit of God, now say to the Lord, purify my heart. Lord, take me, save my soul. Not through the keeping of the law that the Pharisees wanted to, the people to do. And Peter addressed that there and told them, listen, this isn't going to work. Because he said, as I said, read to you here, God who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. The purification doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from God. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. That's the good news. Everybody, the only way to be saved is the same manner. What is that? By faith in Jesus Christ. And through him, our hearts are purified and we have salvation. And then we have the wonderful promises of God that we can experience ongoing purification so that when we sin, if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, 1 John chapter 2. And if we sin, the Bible says, we confess it to the Lord. We acknowledge it, and he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, purifying, being purified and and. God is continually purifying as we look to him by the Spirit of God. So blessed are the pure in heart, but here's the promise that comes with it. For they shall see God. See God. Yes, friends, see God. Well, I know that the day will come when I will stand before him and I will see him face to face. And I praise God for that day that it's coming. I don't know when it will be. My time on this earth grows shorter. And yet, God is faithful to the end. But not only will I see God at the end, but my friend, if you walk in purity of heart, you will see Jesus. You will see him now. You will look upon him, gaze upon him, and see who he really is. And you will experience his presence in your life. In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it tells us that we behold the face of Jesus Christ like, like we're looking in a mirror. Now, the Bible says we see through a glass darkly, which means it's not all clear. But as we look to Jesus Christ, even now in this sin-cursed world, the Bible says we are being transformed by the Spirit of God, becoming more and more like Him, being changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord.
So as God purifies our hearts, we begin to see Jesus with the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith become clearer. We begin to see things better as we walk with God. We begin to shun sin. We see it for what it really is, and we see God for who he really is. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we will have the experience of seeing God by faith in this life. And hallelujah, seeing him face to face in the next. That's the promise. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Oh, Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to purify our hearts by faith. Thank you that the wonderful cleansing blood of Jesus Christ washes away sin so that we could stand in your presence and be justified. You justify us, Lord. You save us. We are not worthy. We have not earned it. We could never earn it. And I thank you, my God, with all my heart and soul for the purification of our hearts, that we might walk in the Spirit, that we might live in the Spirit, and Lord, that we might see God by faith here and see him with our own eyes on the day that we see you face to face. What promises you give, O Lord? Praise your holy name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And so, friends, it is important for us to understand that if out of the abundance of our heart flows all manner of wickedness, gossip and malice and envy and thefts and lying and everything else. We are giving evidence not to a purified heart. Is yours pure? And if not, come to him now. If you're a Christian, repent of any sin and allow him to purify your heart. If you're an unbeliever, repent, repent and believe him for salvation and God will purify your heart. He is able to accomplish this, friends, and only God can do it, but hallelujah. He has, and he is willing to do it to you today. Amen. You know, the book of Jeremiah says, if I take much soap and try to cleanse myself, it won't work. Cleansing comes from God. Purification comes from him. All the ceremonial uh, washings in the Old Testament were pictures of that. So it's not from you, it's not from what you do, it's from what God does, and it's by faith. It's always by faith. So praise God. We can walk with a pure heart by faith in Jesus Christ. Even though we still have a sinful nature in us, it does not have to rule or reign in your life. This beautiful little song by, um, written by Keith Green, based on Psalm 51, a penitent psalm in the Old Testament, creating me a clean heart, O God. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O oh, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh, oh God, and renew a right spirit. presence, O Lord, and take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Spirit within me, create in me a clean heart, oh, oh God, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Renew a right spirit within me. Yes, Lord, I praise you. I praise you that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin and goes on cleansing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for such a salvation, such a gift from heaven. Because without you, without you creating a clean heart in us, we would never see God. Only in judgment. But praise you, Lord. We can see you in beauty and in glory and in a wonderful love relationship that will last for time and eternity. Amen. Thank you, Lord.